Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining me again. I thought I'd bring my introduction outside today, but uh, there's a few aeroplanes and a few birds flying around, but I thought it'd be good just for a quick introduction to say, oh. You forgot to introduce me. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, everybody, this is Ruth. Um, and Hi. Ruth, I'm really glad you came today. And tell me, uh, what are you up to, Ruth? I came to listen to you give your message. Oh, that's... Isn't that wonderful? Okay, well, I'll tell you what, Ruth, you take a seat because the message is about to begin. Stay tuned. Oh, that's tremendous. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, glad to have you here. Ruth is uh, sitting over there and I've made sure that she's at least uh, three metres uh, in distance away from me today. Um, I think that's pretty safe um, with our social distancing uh, requirements at the moment. I think they're very important. I think we should adhere to those. And uh, it's a funny name, isn't it? Social distancing. Because we still communicate with each other socially, but it's a more of a physical, physical distancing. That's what I feel anyway. But today I've got a message um, that's talking about hope. And of course, uh, hope is something that I believe every person in their life needs. And uh, when I look at hope and I see the different areas uh, that people are in need of, I can only go to the Bible for that hope. From the book of Genesis right through to the book of Revelation, hope is personified through the Lord himself. There are so many situations that seemed absolutely hopeless to everybody. There would just seem to be no way out. But God always found a way out for those who trust him. So today I'm going to talk about that hope. I'm going to bring you some messages of hope and understanding and hopefully give you some answers to some of the things that may be troubling you somewhat. But before we do that, let's go to a hymn. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below A little silver and a little gold But in that city where the ransom will shine I want a gold one, that silver line I've got a mansion just over the hilltop In that bright land where we'll never grow old And someday yonder we'll never more wander But walk the streets that are pure as gold Though often tempted, tormented and tested And like the prophet, my pillow a stone And though I find here no permanent dwelling I know he'll give me a mansion my own I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old And someday yonder we'll never more wander But walk the streets that are pure as gold Don't think me poor or deserted or lonely I'm not discouraged, I'm heaven bound I'm just a pilgrim in search of a city I want a mansion, a hop and a crown I've got a mansion just over the hilltop In that bright land where we'll never grow old And someday yonder we'll never more wander but walk the streets that are pure as gold. Hello, and thank you for joining me once again. Today I'd like to bring you a message of hope. Today people need answers, understanding, liberty, love, compassion, all these things. But most of all, people need a sense of hope. They need real hope. My message today is titled, The Pillar of Hope. And of course, the pillar of hope is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. 
I'd like to take you on a journey today through the Bible and show you how you can achieve that hope with biblical principles that many, many people have done before you and before me. Turn your Bibles now, please, to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 7. It says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. That is truly a wonderful verse. There are many, many more verses in the Bible, and some of those I'd like to share with you today, because these are the hope of the world. The hope doesn't rest in mankind. The hope rests in the Lord himself above, and he can give you that peace. He can give you that love. He can give you that compassion and that liberty that is the real hope. So come with me today on a journey as we go through the Bible and we discover the great hope that is available to everyone. Please now turn to the book of Psalms. Psalm 31 in verse 24 says, Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. All ye that hope in the Lord. That is a victory. Throughout history, we read many, many times, especially in the Old Testament, where the Israelites were in great trouble. They were prisoners in Egypt, slaves, in fact, servants who had to work from sun up to sun down. The people felt trapped. They felt hopeless. Many people feel like that today. They feel the sense of hopelessness which is the opposite of hope. And then Moses came along and offered those people hope. He offered them freedom. He offered them liberty and took them through the Red Sea. But I'm today to tell you that the hope that parted the Red Sea for Moses is still the same Lord who sitteth in heaven today. He still offers that same hope. It's there for everyone to just accept it. It's a wonderful thing, but we have to understand it because to some people it might seem surreal or something like a fairy tale or something that's completely unthinkable. But God's still on the throne. God is the same yesterday, today and forever. The hope is still there. I love the book of Proverbs because Proverbs always gives us some great uh, necessities in our life for living. It is wisdom. And in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12, it says this, Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. That was when we come to a point of hopelessness, we feel ill. But read on, it says, But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. A tree of life. The tree of life is something that actually exists in heaven. The tree of life is something that existed in the Garden of Eden. You see, that is our hope. Our hope is in heaven. Our hope is in the Lord. It's not here in earthly things. Earthly things can let us down in one way or another. But I say to you today, hope through the Lord Jesus Christ will never, ever, ever let you down. It's a wonderful thought. Let's have a look at some more verses. The next verse I'd like you to take a look at is in Romans. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. It says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Another very important verse regarding the Holy Spirit comes from the book of John, chapter 14, verse 26. It says this, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Those are beautiful words. Now the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, as it's referred to in the Bible, is known as the Comforter. When a person accepts the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Saviour, 
the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, comes to dwell and live within you. And that is the Comforter. And when we combine the Comforter with the Word of God, the Holy Bible, then we can rest assured and see in God's Word that there is hope. There is always hope, regardless of the situation, regardless of the time, regardless of all things, no matter what man says. God says there is a hope. And that hope is through him. And only through him. There is no other way. He is the creator of all. He is the almighty. He is the great I am. God will be there when you need him. He will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I love that because God cannot lie. God is perfect. And when he says, I, I will never leave you nor forsake thee, I know that that's real. I know that that is hope. I know it's real hope. And so many people throughout history have seen, felt and lived that hope. And today, we might find ourselves in some challenging and different circumstances. The world is changing around us. Yes, certainly. But we have a hope that's real. We have the pillar of hope, which is the Lord himself. Let's go to another verse. In Hebrews 11, verse 1, it says, Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You see, many people have said to me over the years when I've spoken to them about the Lord Jesus Christ, I can't see him, therefore he's not real. Well, you can't see air, but it keeps you alive. You see, many people only ever want to believe what they see. And the Lord is saying, no, no, that's not your hope. Because the Lord does not live in this spectrum. The Lord is a spirit and must be worshipped in truth. The Bible tells us this. So if you go around looking for God, you're not going to see him. It doesn't work that way. You see, God lives within you. Because your body has three parts. It's a body, physical body. It has a soul and it has a spirit. It has three parts. But there's only one being. Just like the Trinity in heaven, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're all one. Just like us. We're parts. Three parts. But we're one body. Isn't it interesting that even when Jesus Christ walked upon the earth and did miracles and healed people, made the blind to see, the lame to walk, raise people from the dead. He raised Lazarus. He said, rise up. And Lazarus came forward. Yet people still didn't believe. No, they didn't. Because they put Jesus to death on the cross of Calvary. He was crucified and died for our sins. The sins of the whole world will rest upon the Lord Jesus Christ. So that God would no longer look upon the sins of men. But we could be forgiven through the acceptance of Jesus Christ. And then just as he prophesied on the third day. Jesus said, I will rise again. He certainly did. Because the Bible told us that was the hope. That was the pillar of hope. The prophets told us that's the pillar of hope. That's the salvation of men. The Lord Jesus Christ rising again. We don't serve a dead saviour. He's not in a tomb somewhere. He is a living God who has risen to forgive those who want to come to him. What a blessed hope. What a blessed salvation. What the world needs now is not money, is not great economics. It's not a man to rise up and be some big strong leader. What the world needs is hope. Compassion, love, understanding, answers. And the answer's right before us. The Lord Jesus rose again. 
the pillar of hope, the pillar of truth, the pillar of freedom. Oh, I wish you could understand that today. I wish you could see that there is no other hope. Oh, we'll get through where we are and the world will be going on in some way or another. But I pray that people just wouldn't forget about the Lord Jesus. Because when hopelessness sets in, he's the hope of the world. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal saviour, I urge you, do this today. None of us are promised a tomorrow. None of us may be here. But the pillar of hope will be here for those who call upon him. I pray that you be one of those. Lord bless. Bye for now.